you know, the spawn is going to be like hard as a rock. I want to break it all up. I want to mix it all up nice and thoroughly. Okay. Then I'm going to get my other six quart bin that's inside the steelware box. I'm going to take one jar of this, dump it in, smooth it out, and I'm going to take the other spawn and this and the other dirt that I just mixed up in the other bin, six quart bin, and I'm going to put it on top of this first jar. So that it's the middle part. And once I get that in, I'll even it out, level it out, and put another jar of this on top. So I don't see any of the mycelium. And then I will pat it down, right? But not hard. Around the sides of the bin, you want to do hard. Okay, you want to get it, push down on it, and press it harder than anywhere else. But mainly you just want to compact it a little bit and level it off, okay? And before you put the lid on this six quart uh, bin and put it into the bigger bin, you want to spray down the soil, the sides of the bin, and the lid of this six quart thing. Then put the lid on, you can put it into here. You put the lid on it. And the lid doesn't have a gasket on this six quart bin. So it's going to be able to breathe, but it'll help keep contamination out. Okay. Then once I got the lid on, I move it into this third steel air box. It has one hand, one pipe, so I can put a hand in there. And I'm already going to have a bottle of water that I spray. And I'm going to have everything I need in there. You know what I mean? Then I will put my box into this steel air box, leaving the lid on for the six quart bin, and then putting the lid on for this giant bin that has a gasket. Now you need at least one glove like this with a pipe, so you can. But two would be better. But the whole point is, is when you put your six quart bin inside your bigger bin right you have and you seal it up you got a gasket on the big lid now you can before you do any ever open up the lid you can sanitize this whole air box with that hand you already have your cleaning stuff in there and paper towels so it's better to have two hands really um, but you sterilize everything and you leave the lid on the six quart box for at least a week before you even look inside okay and after a week, I have a hole with a glove that can go in there. I don't have to open the box. Never open the box until you're ready to harvest, okay? From this point on. You have your glove. You can pick the lid up to check it out to see what's inside. Okay? Now, once 80% of the casing oil, soil on top is, you know, colonized with mycelium, once it gets to about 80%, it's time for you to take the lid completely off of the box, okay, off of the six quart box, not the big box. Never open the big box. You lean it against the side, the lids, right? And then you spray, or you can put the lid underneath the six quart box so it's out of the way, okay? Just put it underneath there. Then you spray down the big box, okay? Not the, not the six quart box. You spray down the sides of the big box and the lid of the big box. And now you just wait. Remember, there's going to be holes in this that have micropore tape on that let everything breathe but keep contamination out. Now, when your mycelium is 80% colonized throughout the casing soil and you can see it all, you know, it's all white, uh, you'll notice pins starting to come up. And those are the two signs that it's time to take the lid off, okay? The pinning and about 80% of your mycelium is, is you know, uh, colonized casing soil on the top layer. Okay, if, if fungus has a gene with the cicada, uh, circadian clock, then it'll like blue light, okay? Some like red light if they have a different type of gene, okay? Most just use light to know which way, you know, the mushroom is supposed to grow. You know what I mean? Just like if you see plants, you'll see them always growing towards the sun. Uh, mushrooms like to do that too. Uh, 
do not grow them in total darkness, okay? Um, what I do is uh, I just use an incandescent light bulb, you know, regular light bulb, and I give them like, uh, you know, six to ten hours of light. Don't give them more than ten hours, though. Um, and that's all they really need, you know what I mean? Um, now, if you're growing mushrooms that have, uh, like, psilocybe cubensis, I think it's called, or psilocybius cubensis, um, it really doesn't care that much about light. It doesn't have the circadian clock gene. I don't think it has a gene for the red light. Um, mostly it just uses light to know which way to grow. Okay. It wants the light, though. You can't do it in total darkness. Okay. Now, let's go over some temperatures and stuff like that. Uh, germination, it wants 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We went over that. It wants 80, 80, relative humidity of 80% plus. Okay. And keep in mind, when we germinate, everything's fixed. So we don't really have to worry about relative humidity. Just have to worry about temperature, and it'll work anywhere from 70 to 80. Okay. Then we move into spawning. We want to get the temperature down because we don't want to promote too much mold. You know what I mean? We don't want to promote that. So we go down to 75, 75 to 77. Right. We want a rel relative humidity of really anywhere from 70 to 80 percent. Okay. Um, but again, when we're spawning. We have our, well, they're in jars. We have our relative humidity fixed. You know what I mean? We don't have to worry about relative humidity. We just have to worry about the temperature. And it will work again anywhere between 70 and 80 degrees. But 75 to 77 would be best. Okay. Then we move into fruiting. Now, there's a couple parts of fruiting. The first part is colonizing. You know, after you get your dirt in there, you have to wait a couple days for the spawn to recover, and then it has to grow throughout all that uh, nutritious stuff that you put in there, the cocoa core, the vermiculite, the whatever. So it has to colonize, and then it has to pin and fruit, right? Okay? So, when it's fruiting, again, you can be anywhere from really 70 to set. I mean, uh, 69, <clears throat> he can be lower than that. I'm just saying 69 to 74 would be best. Um, or to 74. A relative humidity of about 85%. Now, during the colonizing, remember, we put the all the spawn and the dirt together, right? We want it to colonize throughout it so it'll start pinning, right? Well, what do we do? We spray down the lid. We spray down the dirt. And we, the sides, we spray down and we put the lid on it. And what did that do? That caused, that raised up the relative humidity from what we had of that to 90%, okay? Probably even higher than that. Probably raised it up to like 95%, you know what I mean? 99%. And the reason we want that is because we want pinning, and that's what will help with the pinning. What else causes pinning? Excess CO2. Now, mushrooms breathe just like human beings. They breathe in oxygen, breathe out CO2, carbon dioxide. So, we left the lid on. The mycelium kept breathing and breathing and breathing, using up the oxygen and spitting out carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide causes pinning. That's why we leave the lid on for that first week to 10 days, right? We don't check it for at least a week. Now, once it starts pinning, we want it to fruit, right? Okay, it's done colonizing. It's done pinning. We want it to fruit. And we want the relative humidity. We don't want it that high. It's too high. It's 90% for colonization. So what do we do? We take the lid off, right? We take the lid off. So I'll tell you the truth. When it comes to relative humidity, I am guessing at some of this stuff. Um, you do want a high humidity, though. It's, you have a good range that you can be in and still be good at it. You know what I mean? Uh, but 
if you did what I said where you opened up the lid you had already sprayed down when you put your spawn in into the six quart container you sprayed everything down that's excess water there and when you moved it into your still air box you waited for you know for it to start pinning and be all colonized right but once it was you opened up the lid for the six quart container keeping the steel air box closed and you misted the big steel air box on the sides and the lid so you have plenty plenty of water there you do not need to mist again okay you should never have to mist again that's you should be done with that I mean, keep in mind every area is different you could be doing this in the desert so it's all dry and stuff you know and you might have to mist I don't know you know what I'm saying but I've never really you know got a you know a device whatever you call the device that measures relative humidity and put it in these boxes or anything I just use you just use some common sense on it you know what I mean and you'll know what to do uh, but if you have condensation on the sides of the steel air box you definitely have enough uh, relative humidity that's for sure now I shouldn't say you never have to spray it but you're gonna have your spray bottle inside your steel air box with your six quart uh, shoe bins you know what I mean that you're fruiting out of uh, so if you do need to mist you, and you have your glove there, you can just stick your hand in the glove that goes into this two air box and spray. Uh, if it's in the winter time, maybe it's you know it'll be drier and you might have you might have to mist it then. Um, or like I said, a dry climate. Um, so I hate to say never, but you know it should be enough. Uh, like I said, I don't really know the percentages. I'm guessing a lot there. I just know from looking at it like. You know, if it's too dry, if it's too uh, wet, I'll, I'll just know by looking. Uh, you want little beads of, look, it looks like water on top of the, you know, the mycelium mat that grew over top of the casing soil. That's like, and it's not even water, most of it. It's like enzymes or something that the mycelium excrete uh, right before they start growing mushroom, mushrooms and they're pinning. Now you will have to fan these, uh, you know, at least once a day, roll, you know, for a couple minutes, uh, and it helps get the air exchange. But more than that, it helps evaporate the water. You want evaporation. This is my last part here, and it's, you know, it'll work. Like when I used to do it, I didn't, I, you know, I just did it. That's it. I didn't. Uh, you know, when I was germinating, I might have put it on top of the oven uh, because I have a gas oven, and so the pilot light is always on, so it's always a little hotter above my stove, even though it's not on. And I germinate there to get 80 degrees. But other than that, I just do everything at room temperature. You know what I mean? I, I didn't care about the temperature because I didn't have anything to control the temperature with. But if I ever did this again, what I would try to do, okay, is you notice a trend here where you're <clears throat> more you're into the growth, you know, from germination to spawning to fruiting, you're lowering the temperature. Okay, that gives the, uh, you know, that's another sign, not just more CO2 and more humidity, but also less temperature uh, will promote um, pinning and, you know, your mushroom growth but what you want to do okay and if I did this again this is what I would do okay I would take my because everything's in a steel air box right it's got micro pore tape on it so it's you know no contamination is going to get in I would take it and I would put it outside at night or I would put it in a room that was cold like it's 69 degrees okay and then all the water from the, you know, because it's got a lot of humidity in that box, will condense onto the mycelium and onto the onto everything. Just like outside, it's called dew, you know what I mean? <clears throat> then in the morning, I would take my steel air box 
and I'll put it in a 74 degree temperature.